patient is a 56 year old man who presented uh, with a right uh, occipital hematoma. Um, uh, we we perform a, a CTA that didn't suggest an obvious pathology. However, a cerebral angiogram uh, demonstrated the source of hemorrhage. Uh, there was a dural arteriovenous uh, fistula uh, with evidence of cortical venous drainage. Uh, the, the fistula was in the drain into the right transverse sinus, uh, but there was uh, evidence of uh, venous ectasias. Uh, in the cortical veins that are supplied by the fistula. And the, the, the fistula itself was supplied by the recurrent meningeal artery coming off the right ophthalmic artery with some indirect supply from the transmastoid branch of the right occipital artery as uh, seen in this uh, injection of the right uh, external carotid artery in AP and lateral views. Uh, after a discussion among the neurovascular team, it was decided that uh, it was appropriate to treat uh, the patient with endovascular embolization. Uh, we uh, utilized a, a benchmark as a guide catheter, and we had a distal access uh, catheter, uh, DAC 38, as an intermediate catheter to support a headway uh, dual uh, 167. Uh, centimeter microcatheter. Uh, this uh, uh, microcatheter uh, was advanced into the uh, right ophthalmic artery in order to access the uh, recurrent meningeal artery coming off the right ophthalmic artery. This is a very uh, unusual uh, vascular anatomy and uh, uh, but you can see the vessel was uh, large enough uh, for us to be able to navigate safely. Um, you're going to see now how we have the microcatheter already in the ophthalmic artery. Uh, and uh, in order for us to be able to navigate through the tortuous anatomy, we have a, a J shape of the microwire for safety reasons. Um, the proximal uh, catheter has been uh, stable uh, throughout the procedure. In the APD, you can see the, in the benchmark catheter proximally. Uh, and in the AP and lateral view, you can uh, see the distal access catheter tip in the Petri segment of the right ICA. Again, as we're advancing very slowly, uh, uh, the microwire and microcatheter inside the um, recurrent meningeal artery. Uh, we are advancing very slowly due to tortuous anatomy and uh, trying to avoid any vasospasm uh, that would be catheter induced. Now we're straightening the proximal uh, vasculature. You can see straightening the ICA in the lateral view as we advance the DAC to the origin of the ophthalmic artery. Uh, by doing that, we uh, um, make it easier for the microcatheter microwire to navigate uh, distally. And as you saw, we also advanced the benchmark um, as it was kicking back as when we were advancing the uh, microcatheter microwire. Uh, where um, again, advancing the microwire into the uh, recurrent meningeal artery. We're looking for the uh, distal access uh, in order to op obtain a, a safe position for embolization. Um, embolization from a proximal position in a in case with this anatomy would be very risky given the potential risk for uh, embolization to the uh, central retinal artery and, and normal circulation to the eye. Um, now, again, you can see how we are navigating the micro wire into the recurrent meningeal artery and the microcatheter is following it with good support proximally given the, uh, the, the good pos distal position of the benchmark as well as the distal access catheter. Uh, after we attain our position, we perform a, a digital subtraction angiogram with, that shows uh, the region of arterial venous shunting with significant uh, venous ectasias in the cortical venous drainage of this malformation. 
Uh, so this uh, was identified as the source of hemorrhage and we performed embolization with onyx. Uh, we were able to start by injecting onyx 34. We injected a total of 0 0.5 milliliters of onyx 34. This is the thicker onyx, uh, which is ideal for us to create a plug uh, at the level of the uh, distal tip of the microcatheter. That was the injection of the onyx 34. And then uh, we continue to inject with onyx 18. Uh, at the end, uh, we ended up injecting a total of one milliliter of onyx 18 and 0 0.5 milliliters of onyx 34. Uh, you see the good penetration of the onyx 18. Uh, we are uh, injecting it very, very slowly. Uh, this uh, injection took uh, uh, 26 minutes. Um, we are continuously observing to make sure that we do not have uh, reflux as uh, we're injecting given the potential risk of embolization to the normal ophthalmic artery. And um, we are also observing to make sure that this uh, embolic material does not migrate into the venous side without closing the fistula. Uh, it is critical for us uh, that in any case of arterial venous shunting, when we embolize, that we uh, do uh, uh, occlude and devascularize uh, the region of arterial venous shunt and or nidus. Uh, however, it is uh, important for us to maintain patency of the distal venous structure uh, while the arterial venous shunt is still patent uh, in order to avoid the potential risk and complication of uh, hemorrhage uh, during embolization. Um, in the AP view, uh, you can match uh, the cast of the onyx being injected with the um, a stored uh, image in the uh, left lower quadrant in which we uh, store the image of the uh, controlled uh, digital subtraction angiogram in AP view. Um, I like to work in AP and lateral view so that uh, we have a good understanding of the landmarks. Uh, sometimes uh, when there is an oblique projection, it's very challenging uh, for us to get oriented. Um, so this is straight AP and lateral positions of the projections of the tube. Um, again, you can see uh, slowly how we are uh, injecting and penetrating uh, with the onyx and uh, you can definitely follow the cast as it is uh, penetrating into the region of arterial shunt. Um, we're continuously watching for any reflux. We like to work in teams uh, in order to have continuous communication and observation not just of the embolic material uh, moving distally but also of any potential risk of any proximal uh, migration of the onyx in this case. Uh, we do the same thing whenever we inject NBCA or cyanoacrylate or glue um, as uh, it is critical in those cases that um, someone is, yes, watching where the embolic material is going, but someone is also paying attention to any uh, potential migration and or reflux into an, um, a, a vessel that was not anticipated. Um, you can see now how we continue to inject uh, uh, the onyx. This had been primed uh, with uh, 0 0.25 milliliter of DMSO after injection of uh, 20 milligrams or 1 milliliter of lidocaine to um, uh, avoid vasospasm that can be induced by DMSO, uh, which is a solvent for the onyx. Um, we are continuing to inject, so this was a, a very long injection. Uh, sometimes uh, injections are very short and take one or two seconds and then uh, before getting reflux. And sometimes there are these uh, uh, long uh, of uh, several minutes in which there is good penetration into the fistula site. At uh, that moment, we uh, decided to perform a control uh, in injection. Uh, the catheter is in the ICA. 
Um, and we see the, what appears to be significant devascularization, especially in cases of dural arteriovenous uh, uh, fissures, it's important for us to uh, confirm uh, that every pocket of the fissure is completely closed. As you can see, we continue to inject that and continue to penetrate into the fissure site. So, so even though there was apparent complete occlusion, and it, there was uh, still some patency in the arteriovenous shunting. Um, in, these are the type of cases in which uh, sometimes people think that there is a recurrence of the malformation, but in reality it was because it was not completely occluded uh, th at the time of embolization. Um, so we continue to inject until we see uh, some uh, reflux coming proximally into our uh, injection catheter, microcatheter. Um, then at that point, uh, we stop the injection and we uh, perform another uh, controlled uh, digital subtraction angiogram uh, to assess the progress of the embolization. Uh, for us, it was important to also observe the supply from the ECA, so we pulled the guide catheter down while maintaining uh, the position of the microcatheter and the intermediate catheter uh, into the, the ABM. Um, so now that we reposition the guide catheter, uh, we continue to inject uh, until we get uh, reflux in approximately into the microcatheter, and that's the point where we stop injecting. Um, now we're going to do a controlled DSA examination of the right common carotid artery and you can see that there is uh, obliteration and uh, from the intracerebral circulation as well as from the branches of the ECA. Uh, that was a very good result for endovascular embolization. Uh, again, to confirm that there was uh, no further penetration uh, we again inject, and you can observe that there was still a pocket that was filling from the onyx. Again, like I mentioned before, it is critical that uh, you continue to inject until uh, there is a complete obliteration of the fistula, uh, and, and that's proven whenever the embolic material does not uh, migrate any further into the region of arterial shunting. Um, now to remove the microcatheter, we advance uh, the guide catheter again for more support. Uh, we do have uh, the distal axis catheter, the DAC, uh, again uh, for support at the time of uh, withdrawing the microcatheter and with gentle traction uh, for several seconds, uh, we were able to remove the microcatheter with a problem. Uh, the, the, this is uh, one of the potential complications of any embolization, wh whether it's with onyx or with glue, uh, retention of a microcatheter and or rupture of a vessel at the time of putting the microcatheter. So it has to be done gentle, uh, with gentle traction, uh, pulling, uh, and, and for these cases, that intermediate catheter uh, assists uh, to diminish the risk of uh, rupturing the vessel control. Angiogram again shows devascularization, no evidence of uh, arteriovenous shunting, and uh, we perform a six month follow up angiogram again that demonstrates that there is no residual malformation.